So let's start off with three problems that we have with memory, as we've described it so far in MIPS. So the first of these problems is, what if we don't have enough memory? So remember, MIPS gives each program its own 32-bit address space. When we do load word or store word, we specify a 32-bit address. So that means that programs can access any byte in their 32-bit address space. So the MIPS ISA makes this promise that every program can access 32 bits of address space. Now, how much memory can you access with 32-bit addresses? Well, you can access 2 to the 32 bytes or 4 gigabytes of memory. So theoretically, you can access 4 gigabytes of memory. So theoretically, we've promised each program to get 4 gigabytes of space. In practice, the operating system reserves some of this, so it's really closer to 2 gigabytes. But for simplicity, we'll just look at giving each program its full 32-bit address space or 4 gigabytes of memory. Okay, so here's the problem. What if you don't have 4 gigabytes of memory in your computer? So go back four years. Nobody had 4 gigabytes of memory in their computer. Now it's pretty common, but what did people do before they had this much memory? So let's take a look at the problem here. Here's the 32-bit address space that MIPS promises. So MIPS promises a program that can access any byte within this range, from all zeros to all Fs. So any byte in 4 gigabytes of space. Now, say I have a computer which only has 1 gigabyte of memory installed. So that's a 30-bit RAM address space. It's a quarter the size of this. You know, we promised 4 gigabytes, but I've only got 1 gigabyte of memory in my computer. So what happens here? Well, if I go to access the first part, sorry, if I go to access the first part here in MIPS, that's not a problem. I access the first part of memory. Second part, okay. Third part, okay. Now, but what happens when I access this here? What happens when my program tries to use more than the one gigabyte of memory that's in my machine? Well, there is no memory here. So if I don't have virtual memory, I'm going to go ahead and crash. There's no way to access this part of the address space. If I access it, the program will crash because there's no physical memory sitting there. So this is the pro first problem with memory. We promise each program a 32-bit address space, but the actual amount of memory address space we have depends on how much RAM is installed. So here's another program, holes in our address space. So when we have programs running together, multiple programs, they share the memory, and where do we put them? So here's our 32-bit address space. Now we have a computer that has the four, full four gigabytes of memory, full amount of memory it can, so we've got a bunch of programs here. So program one wants one gigabyte, program two, two, and program three wants two also. So programs one and two fit together. So here I'll go ahead and run program one and put it into the memory, run program two, put it into the memory. They use three gigabytes of memory together, so I still got one gigabyte free. Okay, no problem. Now what happens when I quit program one? So when I quit program one, I've freed up a bunch of space here. So now I have one gigabyte here and one gigabyte here, but I can't run program three. Even though I have two gigabytes of memory free and program three needs two gigabytes of memory, it's split up. I've got one gigabyte here and one gigabyte here. I don't have anywhere I have two gigabytes of memory in a row where I can run program three. So what this is called is memory fragmentation. I get these holes in my memory due to the order in which I ran programs. Now let's look at another program problem with the memory. How do we keep our programs secure? So each program can access any 32-bit address what if multiple programs access the same address? So let's take a look at an example here. We're going to have two programs that are both going to issue this instruction, store word R2, 1024 at R0. So this instruction is going to write to address 1024. So here's one program, here's another program. So program one is storing my bank balance. It's going to go store my bank balance at address 1024, and here it is. So it's gone and written my bank balance into memory. Now program two is going to store my video game score, and, well, it's going to store it to address 1024 as well. So here I've run two programs, both of which are writing to address 1024, and they've overwritten each other. So what happens here? Well, they're corrupting each other. Because we don't have any way to separate what memory they're accessing, they're both trying to access memory 1024, which is perfectly legal, they're going to bump into each other. So we don't have any way to keep programs separate so we can cause this corruption or crashes. And this is why programs and computers crashed an awful lot a long time ago, because we weren't using virtual memory. So, what were the problems with memory we looked at? We saw that if all of the programs have access to the same 32-bit memory space, they can crash if we don't have 4 gigabytes of memory installed, because 32-bit addresses promise 4 gigabytes. They can run out of space if we run multiple programs, because we get these holes in our memory. And we can corrupt each other's data. 
So if they both write to the same address, they corrupt what's in their address. So how do we solve this? Well, obviously this lecture is about virtual memory, so it's going to be with virtual memory. But what's the key here? Well, the key to the problem was this thing I set up here about the same 32-bit memory space. So the reason we're having all these problems is that we have the same memory space for everything. Every program has the same memory space, and our actual RAM has the same memory space. Because it's all the same, we don't have any flexibility. So if we can give each program its own virtual memory space, then we can start solving these problems. So that's what virtual memory does. It gives each program its own virtual memory space and then maps it to the physical memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to separately map each program's memory space to the RAM memory space. So with virtual memory, we have a whole bunch of these memory spaces. We have a memory space for each program called its virtual memory space. We have a memory space for the RAM called the physical memory space. And then we're going to have this map in the middle that maps the program memory spaces to the RAM memory spaces. And that's really all virtual memory is. What we're going to talk about in this lecture is all the cool things you can do with it. Now, you can see here how by having this mapping we can solve some of these problems about holes in the memory and corrupting. But what we can also do is we can move data to disk. So if we run out of memory, we can map some of the program's memory space. Instead of to RAM, we can map it to disk. So we can use our hard disk as memory. That's what the term virtual memory comes from. It's not real memory, it's virtual memory. So the key here is the mapping that gives us the flexibility in how we use the physical memory. Now here's a question about shared address spaces. So which of these things down here is not a problem if all programs share a 32-bit address space and we have less than 4 gigabytes of memory? Well, it's really this one in the middle. Can't reach the full memory range due to 16-bit immediates. We saw that we can make a 32-bit immediate by using two 16-bit immediates and two instructions. So we can create that, but the other ones are the problem. Reading some addresses will cause a crash if we don't have 4 gigabytes of memory. Programs can overwrite each other's data if they have the same address space, and they may not fit together. We may get these fragmentation or holes if they're all using one memory space.